Hi, welcome to Pigeon Hill Studios in collaboration with Southern Allegheny's Museum of Art. We are doing a follow-up today on painting the paper mache mask that you created last week. And if you haven't made one, go back, watch last week's video. And then, um, and this week, um, this is my finished um, mask. Well, finished, it's hardened, it's dried, and we're gonna get started on that. But um, let's see, tomorrow, tune in to, I'm, I'm getting a scoop next door. <laughs> um, tomorrow is the story and art with Morgan and Ryan. Okay, story and art with Morgan and Ryan. That's gonna be super fun, because as I understand it, someone's gonna be reading a book, and then Morgan and Ryan are going to be illustrating the visions that they have in their head of the story as the it's being read so that should be really interesting because you know when someone always reads a story to us we're always wondering we always have that uh, vision in our head of what the story looks like i think they're going to be kind of dueling almost like to see who's better I, it's also <laughs> april fool's day so it's, it's oh. some stuff that's going to be going down <laughs> oh that's um, my husband's favorite holiday <laughs> april fool's day um, okay, so let's see, I'm, I'm referring to my notes here. So last week, we'll, we'll, we'll just get started on the paper mache. So last week we all made paper mache masks. Mine started out as a bunny and then we all voted, everyone liked unicorns. So this is a unicorn bunny. See my little lucky yeah. unicorn cup here. Can you see my little unicorn cup? Isn't that cute? Anyway, we like unicorns, so we're doing a unicorn bunny mask. You be a bunny corn? A bunny corn, yeah, <laughs> bunny corn. And I left the foil, this is the back of it. I left the foil in. I'm not gonna bother taking it out because it doesn't really matter to me. Um, so the focus is, of course, decorating the front. And last week, I it was unfinished, so I spent just a little bit more time on it because we only had an hour and I created more of uh, eyes and um, I didn't get too nitpicky about little pieces of, of paper poking up. Uh, it's not all that important for me to be super smooth, but if you want yours to be super smooth, you know, that's, that's okay. So right now, the first thing before we paint it was we want to make sure that your mask is dry and it's been um, several days since I worked on it, so it is dry. And then um, if your mask is a little loose, you can always take, um, or just doesn't feel solid enough, you can always take some Mod Podge glue, great for decoupage. Has anyone ever done decoupage before? It's fun. I haven't. It. It's, it's actually kind of cool. Um, so that could be a fun thing to do. But anyway, use Mod Podge, put a coat over it, and let it dry, and then it's, it's uh, a nice hard surface. So um, I think the first thing that we need to do is, is gather all your materials. So as you can see, I have a variety of, of paint brushes and oh, markers galore. I have regular markers, uh, paint markers. I have um, a variety of paints and this type of tube. And also I have this um, type of acrylic paint. These are all water-based. You can easily rinse them out. Another thing you'll need um, besides paints, brushes, uh, markers, you might need a hair dryer to help expedite the drying of the paint. Um, and then you can have some add-on items such as, you know, sequins and googly eyes and feathers and ribbons or curled paper. You can really embellish this as much as you want. For me, I think I'm gonna keep it mostly simple with just some paint. And um, another thing you'll need is a large uh, container. <laughs> Great <Sorry>. distraction. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's a large container of water in order to, to rinse um, rinse the paint off of your brushes. I have a huge bucket over here that I want to use instead of something tiny like this because the water will get really cloudy and I really want to rinse my paintbrush before I introduce another color to the brush. I don't want it to get muddy or, you know, if I'm using pink, I don't want there to be any, um, any other color in there. 
So, um, is everyone ready to go? I'm ready. Okay, all right. So, last week I talked about inspiration um, and painting. Um, my daughter, I actually miss quote it or misstated. I think she made this in middle school uh, a year or two ago, not Bedford Elementary, so it's Bedford Middle School, which this is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's I really, really like it. And so I thought this is really neat. And this, these mm -hmm. areas here, you can use a Sharpie marker to, to add in some details and then you can fill in afterwards or vice versa, paint it and then outline it in markers. And there's also inspiration here that I showed you last week of all different kinds of styles. You can pick your favorite artist, whether it's, you know, some recently deceased artists such as Picasso or um, Van Gogh, Matisse, Lichtenstein, or, you know, paint it however the heck you want, which is also another name it after yourself. Um, so let's see. Um, Let's see, choosing a design. So I actually like, I don't think it's really on here. So I found a design on my computer because um, I went searching and I, it was kind of like a, thanks, Pinterest. Did I tell you how much I hate Pinterest? Hate it. Here we go. Can you see this elephant right here? With all the designs all the little embellishments. My paint markers can achieve that. You can do it with a paintbrush. It's just a little more labor intensive, but that's what I plan to do today because I have an entire hour and that's how you eat up an hour. Because I could probably paint this in about 10 minutes. So we'll take our time with this one and let's go. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? No? All right. I can't think of anything. Okay. All right. I mean, you're, you're really good at this. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> what I thought I might do is one thing that you can do, I don't know if I'm going to actually do it or not, is you can map out, you can even draw a, a sketch of it. And where the heck are my pencils? Do you have a pencil somewhere? Oh, right here. Here's a pencil. I could draw it. So here's my my bunny, unicorn. One ear is a little wacky. And I have my eyes. Here's my nose, my, my big puffy cheeks. And my teeth. So here, here's my little bunny design. So I might just use this, just do a quick little sketch. I, of, of how I want it to look. And my inspiration looks like the background is mostly black, which I really uh, think that if I painted this black first, it'll really help it to, to pop out. But what I might do is just draw where I want to have some major landmarks on, on my design like the eyes and have some really bold lines come up. Linda and Amina are both saying hi to you. To me? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And then some, some fun stuff on the nose as well. And we can embellish the teeth and even just play around with some whiskers in the design. So that kind of thing. I'm drawing upside down. Can anyone else draw upside down? <laughs> So anyway, I can't draw it all. <laughs> Actually, so, it's quite perfect. So we'll we'll just kind of mess around with this, and we'll see where this where this takes us. Okay. And don't forget to show us your progress stages with your 
with your mask. Okay, so I'm gonna paint my background black and I am just going to use paper bowls like this. Shake the paint up, make sure that nothing, there's no clumps. And I'm just gonna remove the entire cap and just dump a whole bunch in the bowl here. So I just have some black paint. And this paint's really nice and, and relatively fluid and not so fluid that it's gonna run off, but it's not stiff that I'm gonna be struggling with it. So I'm just gonna start painting everything black. As you can see, this goes on fairly quickly. And also, if you wanna take a look at your brush shapes too, this kind of brush is actually really nice. So if you plan to brush everything, this one with a square edge can allow you to do a really nice clean line like that. Um, if you were gonna be using the brush for decoration or if you needed to get in somewhere really tight like that, these are really nice, as opposed to, say, a round brush that doesn't give you as much control in that area. It's a little sloppier. So the type of um, brush shape is, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, is important to achieve the effect that you want. How about that? Miss Linda uh, talked about that too, because she likes the flat ones, the square ones. Yeah, you can you can really get in to do some fine detail with it, get right up to the edge. Whereas the round ones, you, you know, you're just it's almost a guesstimate. Yeah, Miss Linda is a really good teacher. She was um. I believe an elementary art teacher for, mm. yeah. for her career. And um, I admire her, her skills and her patience with kids. <laughs> I have more fun teaching um, my kids and adults. And you have, um, you know, when it's not, um, you know, when we're not all sequestered to our homes and you know with social distancing stuff you have stuff going on here at the studio oh yeah yeah i do tuesday nights is open studio and um that's where and miss linda has attended that that's where i invite pe people who are um artists to cut out time for themselves a lot of people you know they want to do artwork and they just don't make time for it. And they think, oh, well, I'll just build a studio at my house and I'll, I'll just do it at home. Well, the problem is with that is your uh, significant other, your children, your pets, the dishes, the laundry, and everything else. So when um, you make time for yourself and you come to Open Studio, which is only $10 for about two and a half to three hours worth of time, you get um, some peace and quiet to create artwork. Peace and quiet from your distractions. Um, it's not quiet in here. <laughs> um, but um, you also get peer feedback. See how quickly this paint's going on? You get yeah. peer feedback, peer Morgan direction. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, and you bring all your own materials. And if you know you're short on something, I'm sure I have it. Um, so we can certainly give you a hand. But it's it's beneficial for um, you know peace of mind. Sometimes with everything that's going on in life, it's nice to have a little creative escape and do something nice to yourself that doesn't make you count calories. <laughs> right, self care is important. <laughs> it is. Um, for many, artwork is a time to, to heal, you know, mentally. Uh, it's a release. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a good thing. 
certainly has gotten many people through some tough times. Look at that. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy. I'm not going to paint the teeth black. Then that bunny would have rotten teeth. Now, <laughs> I probably used about three tablespoons of paint to cover this in one coat. This is great paint. See, one coat of this fantastic paint, this tube was like maybe a dollar. I think it's like 97 cents if that. Mm -hmm. at, not yeah, at, um, at Walmart. So mom or dad go to Walmart alone without the children and buy the paint supplies that you need. I learned a long time ago that when I didn't bring my kids to the store, I saved yeah. so much money. So instead of using coupons, I, I hired a babysitter for $5 an hour and, um, and went to the grocery store alone. Of course, when you have like three or four young kids, it's like your own bit of freedom. Self-care. Yes, yeah, self-care. <laughs> That's right. Um, you can go ahead and answer it. Okay, I think I'm going to just paint the outline of, or the edges of the front of the ears instead of filling them in black. I'll just go along the edges. But this unicorn horn turned out to be pretty handy. <laughs> and you can see that this thing is pretty darn stiff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She answered the door for me. It was just questions about lawn care. Yeah, lawn care guy. <laughs> he, he wants to know when he can start. Okay. Okie dokie. It's Boy, that pretty was... good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm going to let this black paint dry for a few minutes. Okay, that's what it looks like so far. And now it's time for me to rinse my paintbrush. I'm gonna do a little bit more detail here. Okay. Oh, it looks a little creepy right now, <laughs> but it'll be, it's a work in progress. And that's what a lot of people get frustrated with. They, they look at their artwork and they're like, oh, this looks horrible. Well, that's because it's not done yet. It's a work in progress. And your, your artwork always goes through an ugly stage, especially if you're painting. There are many ugly stages because you have to do it in layers and build it up and then um, a lot of people think, oh, that they should paint it just perfectly, you know, as, as they're going. But that's not how it works in, in the, real in life. reality, yeah, in the real art world, you know. It's <clears throat> okay, so I'm cleaning out. I'm pre-rinsing my paintbrush in this bowl of water, and now I'm going over to my bucket to really clean it out. Okay, and I think next I want to paint the ears pink, but I want a bright pink. So I have pink here, and this looks a little too fleshy pale. I've got purple, which actually might be a, a runner-up. Let's 
see what else. Ooh. I have these paints over here. Let's, let's see what this looks like. This is this is not bad. I think I actually might use this. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, again, I'm just going to, instead of using a bowl this time, I think I'm just going to use a plate and put it on here because this paint, actually, this is fairly fluid, not as fluid as the other stuff, but no, I don't have to add water to this at all. This would be good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting the inside of this. <laughs> It's a good thing you have that horn to hold on to. Yeah. So the black is was pretty opaque, and I'm putting this pink stuff on, and I could see that this is not an opaque paint. Opaque means? Means that you can't see through it. Okay. So this one's transparent, or more translucent, and I can see things underneath, and that does not appeal to me. So. I may add it with this. And this, I could tell, has some white in it. See that? I'll add that. And now I think what I'll do is I'll mix these two together. And I'm gonna add some more of this paint. I like now, the brightness of that but yeah, you don't want to be able to see through. Yeah. So what I can do is I can, um, I can always add another layer on top, but I'm not unhappy with this. So now you could see that this pink here, now I'm trying to mix it all up so when I go to grab it, it won't be streaky. Now, if I was painting a painting, that wouldn't bother me at all. But for this, I want my colors to be solid. And I'm, I'm a sloppy painter. I get paint on my hands. Like if I want to clean this brush, I'll just do that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not afraid to get paint on my hands. See, now see the difference here? Before I went over the black and you could see it. See, I have a streak of cream in there. So I'm also using this edge this nice clean edge. To make that line. And it's a little difficult because this isn't a, a smooth surface. It has little bumps and ridges. So I'm just doing I'm just working with what I have. I'm not trying to fight it. I'm not striving for perfection because perfection is the enemy of being done. So I could see I'm just getting some black in here. I don't really like that, but you know what? It is what it is. So now I have one ear painted and one ear not. <clears throat> so I'll try and show you what I'm doing. Can you see that? Okay. Looks like I poured out just enough pink paint to do its ears. Because <laughs> I'm That's perfect. starting to run low. And I'm also holding this and rotating it as well as my my brush. 
just to try and get the right angle. And I'll probably go back in here with some black and do a little bit more detail. So let's open up my inspiration again. I'm gonna refer to that because I'm thinking, oh, do I wanna make my nose pink? Cause that's like kind of a right. triangle, kind of spreading that brightness balance out. So what the heck, I'm gonna make the nose pink. Just a little triangle. Is the black paint dry? Um, not quite. And you could see that it's not dry because it's picking it up. But I'm trying to um, not smear it, but I'm trying to just add a thicker coat right on top. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Now it needs to dry. Okay. And you know, another thing, if you have stickers laying around, you can also embellish it with stickers or stamps. If you have rubber stamps. Stamping used to be really popular years ago. Do you remember when stamping yeah. was super popular? I never got into it, but I admired the work that people did. It was like, it's the same, you know, like it's like lots and lots of layers. Like if you, there, I mean, there are people who made cards that would, they would send me cards and that it would be like a thousand layers of, you know, 500 different stamps that they used. And it was really beautiful, but mm -hmm. it just seems like a lot of time for well, card. yeah, for a card, right? Now you wonder, you know, when you see those cards in the stores, why they're like five dollars or eight dollars. Well, it's because That's, a lot of time goes into it, right? Yeah, and you're not just paying for the card; you're paying for the talent mm -hmm. to put that card together. Because we all know, if we look at the materials, it's the same thing when it comes to painting and pottery. We, you know, the, the canvas and the paints themselves may not be expensive, um, but you're paying for the artist's talent. Great. Same with piece of pottery. Okay, so this looks like this is silver, but I am looking for a nice bright, bright, bright. This is dandelion yellow. I want to make this dandelion yellow. I was thinking of like a metallic color. And I do have a gold metallic color somewhere in here, but honestly, for me, that's not going to be um, bright enough. Either that or I should make it blue. Yellow, we'll make it yellow. So I'm shaking it up. My daughter likes to paint t-shirts and she uses this paint, this is too much paint. She uses this paint to paint on her t-shirts. She does a really nice job. Wow. Yeah. Rinsing my paintbrush. And um, I'm just gonna pitch that there. Can you toss that in the dry? Okay, so I cleaned my paintbrush. I'm using the same paintbrush and I paint on my hands. And now I'm going to be painting the horn. Actually, I could probably hold it from the tip. It might be easier just to manage. And I'm just putting a solid color on because I will embellish it with paint markers. It's interesting to see how much, um, like the transformation of, of what it was like before paint and <laughs> <laughs> oopsie daisy. <laughs> Not a whole lot to hold on to, so. I'm really curious to see what other people have done. I know that we got some pictures of some bowls. So that some kids did some bowls. Paper mache bowls? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, 
at Bedford Elementary, the um, uh, former art teacher, Lisa Miller, she did these huge paper mache sculptures with the fifth grade class, I don't know, probably close to 20 years ago. And they're mostly in the school library. They're like life size. Do you remember those? Mm, I think so. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, I got picked up some black in there. Okay. So I had Mrs. Miller for ours. Did you? Mm -hmm. Lizzie yeeds on and she says, um, lovely, Mary Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Lizzie should do, a, Lizzie Yee, I nominate you to do one of your cool little painting sessions. She does some really cool artwork. Last week when you did the paper mache, did you um, put the recipe, like did you t talk about the recipe? Yeah. Because I watched parts, of, I didn't get to watch the entire yeah. thing. Um, I did. It's it's a two parts water, one part flour, and it should be the consistency of pancake batter. And if it was too thin, then just add a little bit until you thicken it up. So right. we added like a, maybe a quarter cup more to thicken it up because it was a little too runny. And if you don't refrigerate it, um, say you did one coat, you're going to go back the next day. If you don't refrigerate it, it stinks. It like smells bad after a day or two. Because yeah. I left mine out. I didn't stick it in the fridge. And and it's, I'm like, what is that smell? It was the flour and water. And believe it or not, after like a two, one or two it's days. Like ferment? I, yes. Oh, like, oh. Yeah, it smells smells in a little yeasty, a little sour. Yeah, hmm. it's not pleasant. So um, refrigerate it or wash it down and make some more because it's pretty cheap. So this is pretty wet. Um, and I think I want to make the teeth, what color do you think, orange or blue? Huh. Orange seems kind of fun. You know how sometimes rabbits, or, well, or mice, you see their little orange <laughs> teeth? Yeah. <laughs> kind of rotten. I'm just going to use a smaller brush. Actually, no, I'm not going to use a smaller brush. I'm just going to use the same brush I've been using. called get her done <laughs> it's big brush um, I always when I teach people how to paint or I talk about painting um, they'll have like a, a big canvas and they'll grab the tiniest brush <laughs> you're like it's like you loosen up more and you cover a lot more with a, a big brush and the exercise that I give to them is you know just kind of loosen up you're just um, concerned about getting color, getting the gestures in. The details come way later. And that's when you employ the small brush. I think that that would be more exasperating. Oh, like it's, to, yeah, it's you know, exhausting. Like, and then it, and it's then tedious. It's, right. It becomes like, work. Right. Yeah. Unless you're like one of those kind of people who's like micromanages everything, that would be the brush you probably would prefer. <laughs> but not me. I like to paint because it gives me like the freedom to just express. Uh, even though I, I like to paint portraits and pets and, well, vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, I don't, I can't do abstract. I need some kind of because my background is graphic design and it's very structured and it has to be just right and um, there's no room for mistakes or typos and things like that because that basically it's ruins piece. Um, so I like to paint and be loose and free, so to speak. Uh, not abstract free, but uh, expressive free, I guess. Right. Um, because it's, for me, it's liberating. It's the complete opposite of the rigidity of graphic design. Okay, so this is wet. It's like really, really wet. And if I try and add anything, actually this is dry. 
but in spots it's wet where it's a little thicker. And I'm afraid that if I start trying to draw on it, that I'm gonna smear some stuff. I mean, I may need assistance hydrating these. I don't think I did this one. Got a couple of these paint markers here. Let's see, let's see how this works. I can feel that this is wet. I may hit this with a hair dryer. There you go. We should turn on some elevator music while I'm gone. <laughs> or do you have anything that you'd like to share about what's coming up with Sama at all? I don't know. Just make sure to send our, your uh, pictures. Yeah, send us your pictures, your finished product. And uh, tell us your name and your age. <laughs> Try. Try not to get too noisy. <laughs> yeah, um, just make sure that you send us your um, art. What? Oh, he's you telling me I'm getting the cue to speak loudly. <laughs> um, I know that on we're going to be making masks on Thursday, um, and those masks will be um, then donated to um, hospitals and medical professionals. And um, there'll be a box on Sama Bedford's front porch that you can put your donations in and we'll gladly collect those and then deliver them and distribute them. Um, and then... How about Jess's sip and paint thing that she has online? Um, what was it called? Doodle and... Drink and doodle. Drink and doodle, yeah. Right. Um, Sama, just so you know, um, Sama has five different locations. Maybe some of you know that, maybe some of you don't. But um, for adults, uh, Sama in Loretto is having a drinking doodle. Um, and so if you go to the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art um, Loretto, you'll be able to um, uh, follow, follow along there. Also, um, I shared it to Sama Bedford's page, so you can go to our Facebook page and you can um, let them know if you're interested in coming or check out the information um, there. I know that um, also, Sam Ligonier is coming up with some stuff um, to do. There's a watercolor class, I believe, going on right now um, for adults and um, uh, some other stuff. So those things will be on their, like, shared on their Facebook pages later. If, you, if you're in our class with us and you don't get to check it out, it will be on Facebook for you to check out at a later time. But, um, yeah. So if you have an opportunity and you're looking for something to do um, to keep uh, creative, uh, those are some things. Uh, we do have um, Sama Altoona as well. So go on Facebook, like and follow their pages, and, um, and we try and share on our page everything that the other Samas are doing um, so that um, you guys can be a part of that as well. Okay, wonderful. All right, so back, I back to you, Mary Pat. Thank you. So I took a hair dryer to this to um, help um, speed up the drying process, and it's mostly dry. I know that there are pockets of wet paint, but I'm not going to let that stop me for the sake of getting this done. And um, I am just going to start painting with these paint markers, and I think I'm going to start with the eyes. Now, if it will paint on here, and it seems like this is not working very well. <laughs> so I'm just gonna whip out the paint. Improvise. Right. And usually when I paint a portrait, whether it's of an animal or a person, I like to paint people, mostly. I always start with the eyes. And for me, that gives the, who, whatever I'm painting, it, it just instantly brings life to it. So I thought, well, I will, do I have any white over there? Oh, I do, I have this white. Yeah, this, this is a good white. Mm. Yeah, this one's pretty empty. Okay. But usually I like to, Mm 
and these are synthetic brushes, which don't really move as nicely as um, like sable brushes, sable hair brushes. So what are the difference in those? Like what does um, synthetic well, mean synth for a younger audience? I, you know, like synthetic I'm is basically uh, plastic or nylon. And then sable is uh, from an animal called a sable. Um, and sable brushes are really ideal when it comes to like watercolor um, brushes. I had a professor once who would just talk endlessly about how beautiful sable brushes are. <laughs> <laughs> we used to joke, now get your sable brush. <laughs> that was my airbrushing class at the Art Institute. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of mimic this line here. So you're kind of giving him eyeliner. Yep. So you can see we're like 40, almost 45 minutes into this, this session and it, it takes time. However you want to paint your paper mache creation mm -hmm. is going to be, and however it turns out, it's going to be perfect for whatever, you know, like That's it's right. what you're the one creating it. Right. So it doesn't, if you're happy and you're enjoying what you're doing while you're doing it. Then it's perfect. Right. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I, and I mentioned this last week, I love kids art because kids art is so expressive and honestly when parents on the occasion when parents do come in here and they bring their kids I don't want them touching their kids artwork because they parents ruin it let the kid do what they want and how they want it if they want purple grass so be it because sometimes in the sunlight grass looks purple right Especially if you get that Kentucky blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. Or it looks silver, too. It'll look silver. Mm -hmm. So if you just, you know, it's all about being creative and just opening up your mind. I saw on where my modern met. If you guys want something really fun to do, my modern met is challenging people to take um, well-known paintings that they have in their collection, which would be so much fun for Sama to do too. Right. Is um, that make a portrait or make it replicate the painting in your own way? And there was one of like a zebra standing in a field, and someone took clothes and put it together so it looked like a zebra standing in the field. <laughs> and then uh, another one was like Monet's haystacks, and then they just had one big box and one little box right next to each other. <laughs> it. it was just funny. Yeah. Okay, so you can see this is coming together a little mm -hmm. bit. It's got a long way to go, but we're getting there slowly but surely. And it was all black, and then you just added some white to make it look more eyeball-y. Yeah. So I'm just right now just adding some embellishments. I'll kind of work all over the place. Um, I know we're not going to get done in the time that we have today, but um, can you send us a picture of your finished, like when you're done with yeah. it? And then I can share it with uh, yep. everyone on Facebook. I can even send you a video. Oh yeah. 
which would be kind of cool. So, so that's what we have yeah. so far. And I, this is going to require a lot more time and a lot more work. So I'm just kind of um, looking at it and going, taking baby steps on what I'm going to do next. So I'm using my my computer right here as kind of references to like what I want to do as far as color additions. And um, this is acrylic paint and acrylic paint dries really quickly. So in a way for me, that's frustrating, which is why I paint with oil paints when I paint on canvas because I, I like to be able to pick that color up when I want to, even if it's an hour later. Oils take days to dry, whereas acrylics take a few minutes. And so that perfect pink that you got mixed for his ear is all is is dry pretty much dried up. Yep. yep. There's just a, a small patch here and there that's that's um wet. And I'm using my finger to stabilize my hand so I can paint these curved lines. And I'll do that when I'm painting on canvas too. And sometimes I end up with little fingerprints <laughs> all over the place only because I use oil paints. Um, I'm rinsing my brush and um, let's see. I, I really want to use some white paint. I feel like Maybe I want to do some dots. Do you ever go to the Caribbean and they they do a lot of this dot painting? They'll do dots all around solid blocks of color and it's just a, such a su subtle technique that gives it such really cool character. little dots and if my paint markers were working I would use my paint marker for this but it's not so you just do do your best with what you have see just that little oh yeah that's cute yeah so we'll just kind of continue on with that show them can you see that those little dots. Zoom, zoom. And now I'm doing it on the blue that I painted. Now the density of this paint isn't what I would prefer. The density is when I put it on, I want it to be a solid color, but um, it's, but I could see some of the black underpainting on, but I guess that's just all part of its character. I'm not striving for perfection. I'm just striving to have fun with this exercise. So I'm just loading up my brush and I'm twisting the excess paint out of it. So I have just enough to do the job, but not too much that it it gobs and I lose control. I'm trying to make these underneath the eye look like teardrops. Oh yeah. Can you see that? And it's, I'm holding my brush more sideways instead of more up and down. Now I'm gonna have to turn this upside down so I continue getting the same pattern. Anyone have any questions? I don't have any. I think he's cute. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, what could be really neat too is mounting these. You, know, you could 
take it from the back and you could punch holes through it and tie a string. That way, if you want, you can wear it. But of course, you need to cut the eye holes out. Or you can um, you know, put a string on and then hang it on a hook. Or if you want to get really creative, you can get a piece of cardboard and cut it out to any shape you want, whether it's an oval or a shield or some interesting shape, and then um, hook it onto that and then put that on the wall. So it's almost like a mounted mm -hmm. uh, animal head. Mm -hmm. So that could be that could be pretty fun. Yeah, that's um, it's pretty cute. That like that style yeah, and decorating. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just adding more dots. Actually, um, I think I'm gonna actually turn my brush upside down and see what that does. Oh yeah, I like that better. So I'm using the bottom of my brush to create more round dots instead of the brush itself. And I'm going back over the dots that I've put down before so that they're all relatively consistent. And I saw where Jen Judd did a video on collage on Friday and she talked a lot about complementary colors. And this is where you can use complementary colors, you know, the blue and orange, red and green, purple and yellow. Something else I said. To help. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I no, no, no. To help and, 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 you know, create more vibrancy in your, um, in your artwork. Now, what was your... Oh, I had said um, when you were blow drying that um, uh, I think Sam Oliganier was doing a watercolor class today, but it's not until tomorrow at 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. So tomorrow at 1, Sam right. Oliganier, so Facebook's like Sam Oliganier, and then Jess from Sam Loretto is doing the doodle and Doodle and drink and doodle. Drink and doodle at four o'clock, and that's for adults. Uh -huh. And that's next week. Mm -hmm. And Jess is. Uh, no, no, no! It's this week. It's this week. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's every day this every week, day right? Every day this week, right? Every day this week. At four o'clock. Jess is our educational coordinator, site coordinator. She's also an art teacher. She wears lots of hats, and she is very, very talented. And I am going to tune into her class, too. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. Okay. So this is what we have so far. I think it's super cute. It it's, looks it's great. It's coming along. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's well, really look, changed. Yeah, kind it of really it makes a huge... Jamaican vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like boho, Indian yep, yep. type. So... I'm just going to continue to work on this and I'm going to put a little bit of orange in his eyes. And we will definitely um, post the progress of it so that you guys can see it. Send us, send us the stuff. I will. That'll I'm excited to see how pretty it turns out. Oh, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my mask. Show me yours. <laughs> We're done? I think so. So um, check back in later to see my progress. Please post yours, even if it's over the next few weeks while we're stuck inside. And don't forget, you can utilize things like um, stencils to create patterns of artwork on your masks um, and you know use the bottom of your paintbrush to create dots and um, let the creativity flow <laughs>
Hey, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow.